In this unit, we are reviewing the prerequisite skills that you will need to be successful in AP Calculus. In this video, we will review solving trigonometric equations by factoring. Let's get started. So you look at this thing, um, it's a trinomial, so you're thinking probably factoring is what's going to be needed. And we're going to factor this just like we would factor a polynomial uh, a quadratic polynomial. So I'm going to look at this first term. I see uh, 4 sine squared. There are actually two ways that this could be factored. Um, I'm going to start by splitting this down the middle and I'm going to think oh, maybe this is going to be 2 sine x times 2 sine x. I'm doing a little bit of trial and error here. So if this doesn't work out, I'll go back and do 4 sine x times sine x. That's the other way this could have gone. Anyway, uh, now I jump over and look at the last term of 1. There's only one way that can factor. That's going to be 1 times 1. So here comes this weird thing that, that I, I always say, I sort of made this up, inner plus outer equals middle. Here's what I mean by that. Inner, I'm talking about these two terms right here. I multiply these. Inner, I have 2 sine x. Outer, now I'm talking about these two terms. I'm multiplying again. Okay, that will be 2 sine x. All right, so my little mantra here is inner plus outer equals middle. This is the middle that I'm talking about. So this is looking good. Um, I don't even have to change the signs. Uh, if I just leave these as positive, which would correspond to a positive here and a positive here, that does make 4 sine x. I check one last thing. I make sure that um, 1 times 1 actually gives me this third term of 1, and it does. So that's it. We factored it. Um, but to solve, we need to use the zero product property and set each of these factors equal to zero, except it's the same factor twice. So obviously, we're only going to do it once. So 2 sine x plus 1 is equal to 0. Um, subtracting 1, dividing by 2, we get sine x is equal to negative 1 half. So the sine of what, ignore the negative sign for a second, sine of what is equal to 1 half? Um, the answer to that question will give you the reference angle of pi over 6. So we know the reference angle is pi over 6. And this is what you think in your mind, okay? And I will throw in that um, looking at this reference angle of pi over 6, I will think of pi as 6 pi over 6, and I will think of 2 pi as 12 pi over 6, okay? Now, once I have the reference angle, I think to myself, uh, there are four angles that have that same reference angle. There's one in every quadrant. Um, any of these reference angles will give me one half. It's just that two of them will give me positive one half and two of them will give me negative one half. Um, in this case we want negative one half. So in which quadrants will the sine function be negative? Sine function is negative in the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So what are these angles? Remember, the reference angle is pi over 6. So um, this is 7 pi over 6, all right? And putting 6 pi over 6 reminds me of that. And this angle is 11 pi over 6. So these are the solutions. So we can write x is equal to 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Now, I'm drawing circles and things, um, but all of this should be done in your head very rapidly. When you look at a trig equation and you see that there is a common factor, you want to factor out that GCF immediately. So both of these terms have cosine. So I'm going to go ahead and pull cosine x outside of the parentheses. So that's going to leave cosine x minus 1. Go ahead and set each of these factors equal to 0. So I have cosine x is equal to 0, and cosine x minus 1 is equal to 0. 
The first one is already solved. Adding one to both sides, I get cosine x is equal to one. So where is cosine equal to zero? And here's the part that you picture in your head. Um, cosine is the x value, and x values will be zero here and here. So the solutions to this equation are x is equal to pi over two, uh, that's there at the top, of course, and three pi over two. And where is cosine equal to one? Well, the x value will be positive one over here on the right hand side, so that is zero. So these are the three solutions to part B. Uh, by the way, I should emphasize that we are looking for solutions between zero and two pi, including the zero itself. So that's why we're just going one time around the unit circle and stopping. Otherwise, we, we would have to put an N on here or something in some way to capture the infinitely many solutions that actually exist. All right, I noticed that we have a common factor. We have sine x and sine squared x. So let's factor sine x out and see what happens. That will leave cosine x minus sine x, which seems a little bit weird, but I'm going to go with it. Let's set each of these factors equal to zero. So if I set sine x equal to zero and then cosine x minus sine x equals zero. This second one I feel a little bit uncomfortable with, but um, I think it's going to be okay. Adding sine x to both sides, we have cosine x is equal to sine x. Now I'm going to come back to that. So what about the solutions to the first equation? The sine of what is equal to zero. So here's where you picture the unit circle. You don't write this down. I'm just showing you the inside of my brain. Okay, where is sine equal to zero? Sine is a y value. Y values are gonna be zero here and here. So this is zero and pi. So that's what we have so far. We have x is equal to zero and x is equal to pi. Moving on to the second equation. This one you have to think for a minute. Can you think of any angles where the sine and cosine have the same value? Um, in a previous video, I reminded you of some special values that you should have memorized. So if you have not memorized every single value on this chart, you need to pause the video and memorize it right now. So on this chart alone, do you see any values where sine and cosine are the same? And of course, you're looking right here at uh, pi over four. The sine of pi over four is radical two over two. And the cosine of pi over four is also radical two over two. So there it is. Pi over four, um, the, the cosine and the sine will be the same. So that means, um, well, that's the reference angle, okay? Let me just put this. So we have just found the reference angle of pi over four. So sure, this is a solution. And we can go ahead and write pi over four down. But there are four angles on the unit circle that have that same reference angle, okay? There's another one over here. There's another one over here. Will any of the rest of these give me the same sine and cosine? Um, well, the only other one is here in the third quadrant, okay? All of these will give me radical two over two. But in the first quadrant, um, sine and cosine are both positive. So they're both equal. They're both going to be uh, radical two over two. In the third quadrant, sine and cosine are both negative, okay? But that makes them, again, equal. They're both negative radical two over two. In the other two quadrants, um, one is positive and one is negative. 
So that's why the two solutions to this little equation will be pi over 4 and, um, well, what do we call this? So pi is 4 pi over 4, so that reminds me that this is 5 pi over 4. So let's add that to our list of solutions, 5 pi over 4. So these are the four solutions between 0 and 2 pi. And this problem is very strange looking, but I do notice that we have a common factor here and here. So let's factor that out and see what we've got. If I put this tangent x on the outside of parentheses, that's going to leave behind x minus 3. Hmm, that is interesting because I see that we have an x minus 3 over here as well. Now I've learned not to um, cancel these out. Like I'm tempted to divide both sides by x minus 3, um, but sometimes I'm accidentally dividing by 0 and I'm losing solutions if I do it that way. Instead, I'm going to um, I'm going to subtract x minus 3 from both sides. I'm going to move this over to the left side of the equation. So this is a really interesting problem. So I have tangent x times x minus 3 uh, minus x minus 3. Okay, I don't remember ever doing a problem like this before, so I'm glad you guys get a chance to see this. So can you see that I have a common factor of um, x minus 3. So what I can do is I can factor this out. I'm going to take x minus 3 itself and pull it outside of parentheses. So I'm going to drag my x minus 3 out into the front. What is that going to leave behind? Uh, it might help you see if I put this sort of invisible 1 right here. So imagine that I were to take this away because I've put it here now. And what if I take this away? What's left? Tangent x minus 1 is what's left. So that is what goes inside the parentheses. Tangent x minus 1. And this is why I didn't just cancel out um, the x minus 3. It's like it was tempting to divide both sides um, by x minus 3 and just get a 1 over here. But if I did that, I would lose the solution that I'm going to get from the x minus 3. So you don't want to do that. Okay, instead drag it over, factor it out. Um, now I can use my zero product property and set each of these equal to zero. So I have um, x minus 3 equals zero and tangent x minus 1 equals zero. So I get um, x equals 3 right away and over here I get tangent x is equal to 1. So um, now I'm ready for my full list of solutions. So I already have x equals 3. I'm just going to recopy that. But what additional solutions do I get from tangent x equals 1? Where does tangent equal 1? We know that tangent equals 1 at pi over 4. So that is the reference angle. Okay, so the reference angle is pi over 4. Um, but there's one in every quadrant, my friends. All right, all of these angles have a reference angle of pi over 4. Um, all of them, the tangent of any of these red angles will give me some kind of a 1. But two of them will be positive 1, and two of them will give me a negative 1. In this case, tangent is positive 1. So where is tangent positive? In the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. So that's why we're going to have uh, pi over 4 itself from the first quadrant. But then in the third quadrant, this is 5 pi over 4. All right, and again, because pi itself can be thought of as 4 pi over 4, and that reminds me that this is 5 pi over 4. 